Welcome again in my course Paratronics application in power systems. So, in this particular course so far I discussed several types of power electronic based compensators and today I am going to start a new module uh, of this course in which I will discuss a specific type of power electronic based compensator okay, which is completely different uh, than this uh, whatever power electronic based compensators we have learnt so far. Okay. So, let us have a broad categorization again of this power electronic based compensator, so that I can uh, uh, show you the difference of the uh, particular power electronic based compensator which I am going to discuss today uh, with the previous counterpart. Okay. So, let us start. So, broad categorization of power electronics based compensators. Okay. So, if we categorize this power electronic based compensator into two groups, one you know will come under sand compensators another will come under series compensators which is something you have learnt so far so for sand compensator there is another classification one will come under control impedance base control or rather control susceptance based based compensators another will come under converter based compensators ok. Similarly, uh, for a series compensators also we will have two categories one is one is of course, controlled impedance based or reactance based impedance or reactance based compensators another will be converter based compensators. Okay. Now, this uh, control susceptance based compensators we have already learnt with we have uh, we called it as SVC and you have seen there are various types of SVC like uh, FCTCR then uh, MSCTCR then TSC TCR and so on. We also have TSC and TCR as well. Okay. So, this already uh, discussed in this uh, uh, previous module. So, these are already discussed. In the previous modules. Okay. Now, similarly for this uh, control impedance re, uh, or reactance based compensator we have uh, already discussed uh, there are might be different groups like uh, thyristor 
based uh, series compensator, third stage control series compensator that is TCSC or it could be TSSC, third stage switch to its capacitor or it can be GCSC that is gate turn off control series capacitor, okay? GTO control series capacitor. So, this is already discussed again, this is already discussed. in the PVS module. Okay. So, what is new in this particular uh, topic is converter based compensator which I am going to discuss in this particular module and we will continue to this discussion at the end of this course also. Okay. Now, you know that this SVC static var compensator we represent effectively it is like a variable susceptance. So, this is suppose V S V C, this is V S V C and the current drawn by it let us say is I S V C. So, we represent it like a variable susceptance. Okay. So, it is equivalent form is equivalent simplistic form of representation of S V C is like a variable susceptance. Similarly, here uh, we already discussed that this TCSC it is it is nothing but a, a representation of a variable series variable series impedance or variable series reactance. Okay. So, it is a value is Z TCSC and it, it is it is to be connected in series with that particular transmission line whereas, it is to be connected and the shunt that is why they are actually. So, this is something we have learned so far. Now, what is to be understood in this particular module is something called converter based compensator something called converter based compensator and the, the philosophy behind this com converter based compensator is quite different than the control uh, susceptance based or control impedance based compensators. Okay. And it, it they re itself represent a reactive power source, they itself represent a reactive power source. And if I represent this converter based shunt compensator, I will show you that uh, it is popularly named as STATCOM. STATCOM. So, it, it, it representation is something like this, there is a variable current source rather yeah variable current source which represents this statcom. So, its representation so uh, statcom is a type of this converter based compensator. Now, what is the full form of the statcom? I will come to that. Okay. So, but it, it representation uh, simplistic way of representing or uh, uh, simplistic equivalent electrical model of this statcom is something like this. So, it draws or it injects certain amount of current which let us consider it is I statcom okay, from the system voltage wherever it is to be connected that is P statcom. So, therefore, this representation and that representation are quite different. Okay. Now, I will discuss the basic operating principle of this in more detail once I discuss different types of converter based compensators. Similarly, uh, this Converter based uh, series compensators, converter based series compensators can be represented like this. We have a controllable voltage source like this, which will uh, inject certain amount of voltage to the network. And uh, one of the example of this converter based compensator is SSSC. What is the full form of this? I will come to that. It is its full form is statics. Uh, synchronous series uh, compensator and I uh, will come to that. But if you look at this representation and that representation, this is quite different. Okay. So, that is why you need to study this and uh, there are several advantages of this converter based compensators over this control susceptance or control impedance based compensators, which also I am going to discuss. Okay. So, the goal of this today's discussion is I will uh, introduce a new concept, it is not a new, but it is uh, new in the sense that we have not discussed it uh, in this particular course uh, so far. 
So, I will discuss uh, this basic concept of this converter based compensators. I will also discuss the classification of uh, converter based compensators and I will also discuss the difference of this converter based compensators over this uh, series and sun counterparts like SBC and TCSC and also I will discuss the basic operating principle and the control characteristics or VI characteristics of such compensators. So, let us proceed. So, here we will start with converter based based compensators. So, let us have a broad categorization of this. This uh, compensator stands for uh, as I uh, mentioned at the very beginning of this course, when I talk about uh, the terminology uh, compensator, you have to understand it is a kind of power electronics based compensators. Okay? So, which I am not going to discuss uh, or which I am not going to tell again and again. Okay? Now, converter based compensators can be classified or can be categorized into two parts. In fact, uh, whatever I am discussing right now, these compensators are useful for power system because our goal of this course is to, to discuss these compensators which are usually used in power system for various reasons. So, these converter based compensators are can be classified into two categories. One type of compensators which are used in power transmission system. Power transmission systems. This type of uh, you know uh, compensators are also named as fax devices F A C T S devices which means F stands for flexible a, A and C stands for AC and T stands for transmission systems. Okay. So, these converter based compensators also named as fax devices or flexible AC transmission systems. In fact, uh, you might have heard this, this terminology in basic power system course as well. So, these are the uh, power electronic based or power electronic converter based uh, compensators which are traditionally used in power transmission systems. Similarly, we have uh, some converter based compensators which are used in power distribution systems. Okay. So, these devices are often called this custom power devices C P D. The full form of it is custom power devices. Okay. They are also compensator, they are also power electronic based compensator, they are also converter based compensators, but they are uh, used in power distribution systems. Now, there is a difference between uh, this power transmission system and power distribution system in terms of uh, various electrical uh, aspects uh, like uh, R by X ratio, resistance to reactance ratio, in terms of uh, this uh, uh, the amount of voltage unbalance or voltage imbalance happens in terms of these several other power quality problems which are more really, uh, predominant in, uh, in power distribution systems. And also uh, in terms of the topological consideration power transmission system usually a very bigger and longer network with a uh, highly meshed uh, type of topology whereas, uh, power distribution network is usually of radial with relatively shorter. Okay. So, apart from the uh, usual uh, 
a difference of the voltage levels. There are so many differences in, in view of the electrical aspects uh, between the power transmission systems and the power distribution system. So, therefore, uh, same type of compensator switch could be used in a uh, power transmission system may not be useful in power distribution system. This is the goal of my this discussion is to make you understand that. Okay. So, there are uh, various types of uh, power transmission or rather converter based compensator used in power transmission system. They can be categorized as statcom, then SSSC. They are often very popular with this acronym also, but I will write their full form as well and UPFC. Similarly, this uh, custom power devices can be categorized into uh, three different broad categories. One is called D statcom, one is called D VR, one is called UPQC. Okay. Now, what are the full forms of this uh, statcom SSSC UPQC? Let me write this TATCOM the full form is static synchronous although this TAT means uh, stat uh, is uh, the first four letter of the static synchronous part is somewhat uh, omitted over here but it is a very uh, uh, you know uh, useful uh, terminology for describing this TATCOM and then COM means compensator. Okay. So, STATCOM is full form is static synchronous compensator. Similarly, SSSC triple SC is stand for static synchronous series compensator. Okay. Now, full form of this UPFC is unified power flow controller. D statcom stands for distribution statcom or distribution static synchronous compensator. Okay. D here it is called it is full form is dynamic voltage restorer and UPQC stands for unified power quality conditioner. Okay. So, in this particular uh, you know uh, this uh, course, I will basically discuss two different types of uh, uh, this, this converter based compensator, one is TATCOM, another is SSSC. Now, what is STATCOM? STATCOM is static synchronous compensator. In this module, I will discuss uh, the basic operating principle of STATCOM and uh, its control characteristics and its application in power system. And also, I will discuss what is the basic difference uh, between this STATCOM and SPC because both are effectively shunt compensator. So, STATCOM is a type of 
shunt compensator. Similarly, SSSC is a kind of series compensator. Okay. So, STATCOM is a type of shunt compensator. Uh, SSSC is a type of series compensator. Okay. Now, uh, I will also discuss uh, the basic operating principle of SSSC in the last module of this course and uh, this, this uh, uh, control characteristics of SSSC and its fundamental difference of over this con impedance based uh, compensator like uh, TCSC which I already discussed and its application to power system in very detail. Now, apart from these two, there are uh, you know uh, as I said a specific type of uh, this converter based compensator used in power transmission system which is named as UPFC, its full form is unified power flow controller. It is nothing but a combination of uh, shunt and series compensator. So, often uh, this is also named as STATCOM plus SSSC. So, they use STATCOM plus SSSC. Okay. Now, uh, since this course is all about uh, uh, applicable of this compensator in power system or to be more precise uh, in power transmission systems, I will basically discuss STATCOM and SSSC. Okay. But UPFC I will leave uh, if, if someone is interested, uh, he or she can go through this with a self study. Now, similarly, uh, this in power distribution system. Uh, this D STATCOM is uh, its constructional wise quite similar to STATCOM. Uh, it is also a type of shunt compensator, okay. but uh, its functionality wise is quite different this, uh, this STATCOM because power distribution networks or power uh, distribution systems are quite different than the power transmission system. So, therefore, uh, STATCOM cannot be directly used. So, the, we have uh, uh, devised uh, this, this power electronic and power system communities or uh, power engineering communities, they devise this D STATCOM which is applicable in power distribution systems for similar task which is uh, doing in uh, by the STATCOM in power transmission system. Okay. But of course, uh, this D STATCOM functionalities are much more uh, than this STATCOM those things I am not going to discuss over here. Similarly, this DVR, it is a kind of series compensator. It is a kind, kind of series compensator uh, similar to SSSC, but of course, functionality wise they are quite different and constructional wise there is a difference, but uh, the basic goal is same. Now, uh, this UPQC similar to UPFC, it is a combination of uh, shunt plus series compensator. Sometimes this is similar to this uh, combination of D STATCOM plus DVR. Okay. So, constructional wise is similar to UPFC, but functionality wise quite different and uh, the basic goal is of course, uh, much similar to this UPFC and uh, in this particular course, I am not going to discuss this. Uh, D STATCOM, DVR and UPQC, even UPFC, but I will discuss this STATCOM and SSSC in very detail. Okay. So, let us proceed for uh, discussion to STATCOM in this particular module and SSSC I will discuss in the next module. So, let us start with STATCOM. As I said, it is a uh, full form is static. So, first uh, four letters stands for this first four letters of static. Then we have a synchronous term, which is very important. Why it is so important? I will come to that. And then we have compensator. Okay. So, uh, first four terms of comp will come under this. So, with this first four letters of compensators and first four letters of static, this acronym is built that is STATCOM. Okay. So, 
to discuss the basic operating principle of STATCOM, let us also discuss what are the assumptions we take. This is uh, the usual assumption we usually take uh, in, in throughout the course consistently. So, our assumptions are the whole unit is lossless, balance, lossless and balance for this time being. Okay. Now, uh, let me draw the basic schematic diagram of STATCOM. So, suppose this is the bus where the STATCOM is to be placed, it could be at the midpoint of the transmission line which uh, I discuss uh, many times while discussions with this SBC. So, this is what the bus at which this TATCOM is be placed. Then we will be having a step down transform similar to this SBC. This is a step down transformer. Then we will be having a converter. This converter is we consider here voltage source converter. Okay. As you know there are two types of converter voltage source and current source. So, here we assume that uh, we have a voltage source converter. Okay. So, this is uh, this step down transformer. And it is And uh, why we kept this uh, step, uh, step down transformer to step down the voltage level uh, from the bus voltage to a much lower voltage. So, that our VSC uh, would be rated to much lower voltage level than the system voltage level. Now, system voltage level usually uh, transmission level voltage like uh, 220 kV or 765 kV is quite high. Okay. Uh, whereas, this uh, uh, this VSC level or uh, this TATCOM level voltage would be much lower than that. It could be 11 kV, it could be even lower. Okay. Now, uh, this voltage VSC stands for voltage source converter and this is a, a DC voltage uh, DC source. So, this is a DC site, the, there is a capacitor just to hold this DC voltage constant. Okay. So, now uh, the basic operating principle is The basic uh, operating principle is, so unlike this uh, uh, impedance or uh, uh, susceptance based compensator, where we have seen that uh, basically this uh, the role of the power electronic switches are uh, to, to uh, vary uh, the, the susceptance or impedance of the uh, SVC and uh, TCSC respectively, but here the, the role of this power electronic switch is quite different. The role of the power electronic switches here is to generate a, 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 a three phase voltage, three phase voltage similar to a generator. So, the role of VSC is to generate a three phase voltage similar to similar to a synchronous generator. Okay. Now, you know that uh, this is a of course, I have drawn this single line diagram, single line diagram. 
single line diagram of statcom but it is eventually uh, of three fetch so i am just giving a symbol uh, these three parallel lines to represent that it is of three fetch device okay so the role of vsc is here uh, to generate a three fetch uh, voltage similar to a synchronous generator now suppose this bus voltage at any point of time uh, this is, is is equal to v at an angle 0 and if we just represent the step down transformer with its uh, reactance x sigma the way we did in case of SBC as well and this here we have this uh, uh, this VSC uh, is it is also generating a uh, voltage which is represented by VC bar. So, V c represents the voltage generated by V s c it is of course, a three page voltage we are representing the single line diagram here and uh, let us consider that it is representing that V c at an angle alpha. Okay. So, it is representing a voltage uh, magnitude V c at an angle alpha. Okay. Now, what would be the uh, net active and reactive power exchange? between this bus and this VSC. So, therefore, the active and reactive power exchange between the VSC, VSC and the bus would be. Now, if we consider v, uh, VC is the converter output voltage. So, if we consider uh, uh, VC uh, as a VC uh, as converter VSC output voltage. Then V c dash let us consider is uh, V s c output voltage refer to refer to the other side of other side that is uh, uh, this bus side other side of transformer. Okay. So, V c dash is basically representing uh, the voltage at the other side of transformer. So, basically we can model this whole configuration is something like this. We have the system bus voltage which represents V at an angle 0 and we have a step down transformer uh, leakage reactance which is x sigma and here we have this V c dash at an angle alpha which represents the voltage uh, output voltage of VSC refer to the other side of the transformer. Okay. Then the active power which will exchange between this suppose it is represents P and reactive power exchange between this let us represent Q then active power exchange would be equal to V V c dash as we know divided by x sigma sin alpha and reactive power exchange would be equal to V V c dash divided by x sigma cos alpha minus this V square divided by x sigma. Now, somehow if we can, so this is the we know, okay. so this, this uh, expressions we already derived many times. So, this would be the uh, active and reactive power exchange between the uh, voltage source converter VSC and the system bus. Okay. So, uh, now if we consider 
alpha is equal to 0. That means, this this alpha is, is equal to 0. Then what would to happen? If you put alpha is equal to 0, p will be equal to 0. However, q will be equal to v v c dash minus v divided by x sigma. Okay. So, what uh, will happen if we consider this alpha is equal to 0, p is equal to 0. What does it mean? Uh, what does it imply to? So, p is equal to 0 implies to that uh, active power exchange is 0, active power exchange is 0. Okay. And why uh, what this q is equal to this represent or uh, q is equal to this expression imply to? Uh, this implies to that uh, this reactive power exchange is non zero. Okay. That is something very interesting. Okay. So, if we make this alpha is equal to 0, there will be no active power exchange, no active power exchange, but there would be reactive power exchange between the VSC and the system bus. Okay. And that is what is our goal. Here, uh, we, uh, we devise, uh, our goal is to devise a device uh, which can exchange the reactive power. Okay. And uh, that is why it is reactive power compensator. Right. Now, so therefore, by considering this alpha is equal to 0, uh, it is possible to have uh, no active power exchange, but there would be some amount of reactive power exchange possible. Now, what, uh, what is the physical interpretation of alpha is equal to 0? The physical interpretation of alpha is equal to 0 is, so alpha is equal to 0 interpretation is, the physical interpretation is the system bus voltage and VSC output voltage are in same phase. Okay, are in same phase, and that is what the uh, the necessity that is what the uh, the requirement or that is what the essential conditions for developing this TATCOM. So, we should have a VSC output voltage which is within same phase of the system voltage. So, that there will be no active power exchange, but there would be reactive power exchange. Okay. So, that is what the basic operating, operating principle of this uh, uh, STATCOM. Here STATCOM unlike this SVC, uh, it is not used to used its switches to uh, this VSC is not used its switches to control the reactance or the susceptance of a uh, inductor or capacitor, rather uh, it, it is used to generate a, a voltage source. Or it is acting as a voltage source and thereby uh, it is uh, what type of voltage source it is? Its uh, output is a uh, such kind of voltage source which is which will be in the same phase or uh, no phase difference with the system voltage. Okay? And uh, thereby uh, there would be no active power exchange, but reactive power exchange would be possible which is our primary goal because we know that uh, this uh, power electronic based compensator switch. I am dis discussing with so long time are essentially uh, a type of uh, device which can exchange the reactive power to the network. Okay. Now, let us see uh, what could, wha how this uh, reactive power exchange would be essential or uh, how can we do this reactive power exchange for this TATCOM. Okay. So, we are discussing STATCOM here. Okay. So, let me again uh, uh, draw this uh, single line diagram which I have drawn over here, this single line diagram. So, we, we have a 
system voltage V at an angle 0 that is bus voltage, we have a step down transformer, it is modeled as, it, as its rickage reactance x sigma and we have V c dash is uh, it will be on the same phase with the system voltage. So, here, here this is bus voltage or system voltage here we have output voltage of VSC referred to to uh, other side of transformer. And suppose the current which is flowing from the system side to the VSC side is represented by I. Okay. So, I is the current flowing from one side to other side. Now, if we draw this, if we apply KVL, applying KVL, so we can find out a algebraic equation which is this V at an angle 0 minus this i of course, there will be uh, j term over here. So, this will be i j x sigma is equal to this v c dash at an angle 0. Okay. So, this is our KVL equation. Now, there might be two possible cases. Case 1 V is greater than V c dash or rather I, I write V c dash is lower than V and case 2 is V c dash is greater than V. Now, if V c dash is equal to V, so both would be equal and there will be no reactive power exchange also. So, so either V c dash uh, that is the output voltage of VSC referred to the other side of the transformer should be higher than the system voltage or should be lower than the system voltage. If that uh, VC dash is equal to V as you can see from this equation there will be no reactive power exchange possible. So, VC dash is equal to V means Q is equal to 0. So, so that is why I did not consider that case. So, VC dash cannot be equal to V because V c dash equal to V implies to Q is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is something I hope that it is understandable to you. Now, when this V c dash less than V, then how would be the phasor diagram? So, let us draw this V. So, this is what the phasor diagram of V. Okay. So, it is uh, considered to be reference. Okay. Now, uh, since uh, V and V c dash are in same phase, so uh, the phasor which represent uh, V c dash since its uh, magnitude is lower than V, so would be something like this. Okay. So, then what would be then uh, this J i x dash? Now, you, you see from this particular equation, I can uh, find out this V at an angle 0 is equal to V c dash at an angle 0 plus J i x sigma. Okay. So, therefore, uh, you can see this is our V at an angle 0, this is V c dash at an angle 0. So, V, uh, v c dash at an angle 0 plus this drop will be uh, will equate with the system voltage. So, therefore, this would be our this drop that is j i x sigma. If this is the uh, direction of j i x sigma, then what would be the what would be this uh, uh, phasor of this i? This since you know j 
multiplied by i j is a complex operator which makes uh, this 90 degree phase shift. So, therefore, this the phasor i would be somewhere here ok which will lag 90 degree with respect to system voltage and the uh, VSC output voltage. So, here I lacks 90 degree with respect to the VSC output voltage okay, or system voltage. Okay. So, that is what uh, this case 1. Now, in case 2 again this is what the phasor diagram you know. So, in case 2 let us draw this phasor diagram once again. So, suppose this is our V at an angle 0 since uh, or I should draw it smaller because V c dash is now higher. So, this is V at an angle 0. So, this is considered to be reference. Now, V c dash would be higher than uh, this with higher magnitude. So, V c dash would be somewhere in the same phase of uh, with system voltage, but it magnitude will be higher. Okay. Now, according to this equation, this V c dash plus J i x sigma drop is equal to this. So, therefore, to, to uh, fulfill uh, to keep this equation sat satisfied our j i x drop would be somewhere here. So, this will be j i x sigma drop. Okay. Now, if this is j i x sigma drop again I said that j is a complex operator which is responsible to uh, have a 90 degree phase shift uh, of with respect to the system current. So, therefore, uh, this this current direction would be somewhere this which is leading with respect to the system voltage or VSC output voltage 90 degree. So, therefore, here for this particular case I leads 90 degree with respect to the VSC output voltage or the system voltage or the system voltage system bus voltage. So, this will happen when V c dash uh, greater than V and this was happening when V c dash lower than V. Now, what is the essential difference of these two? Here you can see this I is lagging. So, therefore, uh, you can see that uh, here uh, it implies to that this this Q what is getting exchange over here is uh, what would be the direction of this uh, Q since uh, your system voltage is above the uh, VSC output voltage. So, Q is absorbed by VSC or Q flows from system side to the VSC side. And here for this particular case, since uh, VSC output voltage magnitude is higher than the system voltage. So, therefore, Q is delivered by ok. So, therefore, with uh, by changing this uh, magnitude of the uh, this this output voltage of VSC, we can uh, decide that this TATCOM can be operated either in inductive mode or it can be operated as capacitive mode. So, if this mode of operation is a if, if we call it inductive inductive mode of operation and then this is capacitive mode of operation. So, here as if this VSC act as a capacitor 
and it delivers this reactive power to the system, it injects the reactive power to the system and this uh, is uh, where this VSC is acting as an inductor and it is absorbed the reactive power from the system that is what the difference is. Okay. That is what the difference is. Uh, so, VSC uh, based this TATCOM can be operated uh, either in the inductive mode thereby it, it uh, creates uh, a situation that it can absorb reactive power from the system and it also can act as a uh, capacitive mode thereby it will create a situation that it can deliver some amount of reactive power to the system. Okay. So, that is what the basic operating principle and from this, this principle you can eventually uh, understand that uh, this STATCOM is quite different to the SVC. Okay. So, here we, we are not uh, using these uh, switches just to operate the uh, device either in partially mode or fully conducting mode or partially conducting mode or fully off mode. Here rather the switches of this VSC are used to generate a uh, voltage, a three phase voltage which would be in the same phase with the system voltage. However, the magnitude of this voltage can be varied to operate it either in this inductive mode or capacitive mode. Okay. So, that is what the basic operating principle of STATCOM is. Now, let us draw the control characteristics. Tricks of STATCOM. Okay. Let us draw the control characteristics of STATCOM. How the control characteristics of STATCOM uh, would be? So, suppose this is V STATCOM, this is I STATCOM, this is what the V reference. So, the control characteristics of STATCOM would be something like this. Okay. Suppose this is O, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. So, therefore, from this you know uh, characteristics you can see this is the control range. Control range. This is the this is the absorption limit. This is the production limit that is VAR production limit and VAR absorption limit. So, this is the control characteristics of STATCOM. Eventually, you know that uh, this BC can be parallel to this uh, uh, horizontal axis or uh, it can have 0 slope or it can have a uh, bit positive slope like uh, this I, uh, this SBC which I, I discussed earlier due to the reason uh, for the same reason I discussed in the SBC. However, you looking at this control characteristics, if we draw the control characteristics of SBC once again, you can understand the difference between the operating principle of SBC and STATCOM or capacity capabilities of STATCOM and SBC. So, how was the control characteristics of SBC was? Suppose this is V S uh, reference. So, it was something like this. Okay. So, this is O, this is A, this is B, this is C. This was the control range. This 
this was the control range this was ispc this was pspc okay so this is this was the control characteristics of spc now why i have drawn it because you can understand the difference between the control characteristics of statcom and spc okay so looking at this illustration one can understand that unlike spc uh, the statcom can provide uh, constant amount of this compensation irrespective of the system voltage or i should say that this uh, the statcom output or statcom the, the reactive power support the statcom can provide is independent of the system voltage unlike spc so the one fundamental difference is that unlike spc the reactive power support that a statcom can provide is independent of system voltage independent of system or bus voltage okay so here you can see that uh, the amount of uh, reactive power support that this uh, spc can provide depends upon the system voltage okay so for if the system voltage drops to here only that much of support that uh, that much of support of reactive power that the spc can provide however even if the, there is a voltage drop of the spc to here spc can provide same constant amount of uh, voltage drop here so basically you can see that this uh, production limit of this uh, and absorption limit of this spc are system dependent system voltage dependent so this production limit and this absorption limit of spc both the limits are system voltage dependent whereas here uh, this is system voltage independent only uh, this uh, production of this spc at very lower voltage would be uh, somewhat not consistent with this uh, this ab characteristics but other than that apart from this small you know system voltage uh, at any other system voltage it can provide a constant reactive power support okay so that is what very in, uh, uh, interesting and very important okay so thus uh, statcom is more useful useful uh, in when system voltage falls okay so the next thing that i i i should discuss that the losses and harmonics in statcom are lower than spc why it is so because as you know this losses and harmonics happened uh, to spc uh, uh, because of the uh, the switching of uh, this thyristors to operate it partially conducting mode whereas the switching in a statcom is basically to generate the uh, uh, three phase uh, near to sinusoidal voltage source so therefore with the use of multi level converter or advanced converters it is possible to have a very lower harmonical voltage that uh, to develop and that is what uh, that is why the overall uh, you know uh, this uh, 
uh, harmonics in statcom is much lower so as the losses also okay now third thing is which is very important statcom is more fast okay so statcom operation is more fast as compared to SVC. Okay. So, due to these reasons, you know, Statcom is having superiority in performance, in operating speed, and in various, uh, you know, aspects over this SVC, which I am also going to discuss in the next lecture as well. But uh, in this particular lecture, you should uh, learn uh, what is the basic operating principle of Statcom and how it is different to SVC. Because lot many times I devoted for uh, this discussion with SBC and Statcom is its next uh, phase of this development. Uh, so, you should understand the difference between the, uh, the Statcom and SBC. Okay. Other than that, uh, this functionality wise, uh, this application wise, uh, this SBC, uh, the Statcom is as good as SBC. However, it is having superiority in terms of the fast response in terms of lower harmonics, in terms of lower losses, but cost wise SVC might be uh, less. So, that is something you should be understood and uh, uh, this, this uh, there are several uh, works uh, or there are several researches going on and this uh, the development of Statcom, in particular development of the topologies of Statcom and also the development of a control strategy for Statcom. So, if someone is interested can go through the literature of the Statcom in very detail. Uh, it is, it is there are uh, voluminous uh, you know works you can find uh, and still work is going on. Okay. Now, in the next lecture I will discuss the application of Statcom and application wise how it is different to this uh, SVC and performance wise also how it is different with the SBC. So, till then let me thank you for attending this lecture as well. Okay. So, thank you very much once again for attending this lecture. I look forward uh, to uh, meet you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.